Hello, this is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University and for Wiley Books. And what you're looking at right now on the screen is an orbital particle field. So basically you have a series of particles that have a lifetime and different masses that are being shot out onto the screen at different lifetimes and they're, and they're orbiting each other according to Euler's equations. Now, if you're a physicist or a mathematician, you're just going to love this to death. You can do this in paper vision. However, there is a little bit of hacking of the display object that has to occur. We'll talk about that in the upcoming future when we discuss deploying physics in the paper vision book. But what's important here is that, you know, this is great, this is very interesting, but it's not very practical if you're a web developer. If you're a physicist or mathematician, this is great, but if you're a web developer, hey, this is just too slow. We have, I believe, eight particles here, and if you uh, try to go any higher, like, for example, 400 particles, nothing's happening. So there's got to be a way, in a sense, to uh, to change this, in a sense, to get that 400 particles on the screen, and that way is billboarding. So let's open up my book and discuss billboarding real quick. We are in chapter three of my book where we discuss billboarding, and billboarding is a way to make a 2D surface look 3D. So billboarding is making a 2D polygon look 3D by applying a 3D looking texture and keeping the 2D polygon always oriented towards the camera. So as you move around, it's always facing you. And Paper Vision has a way of doing that. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've done. I'll move to the Paper Vision uh, program right now. So we are actually in Flash, believe it or not. You're probably typically seeing me do Flex, but I was a Flash program before a Flex, so I have a right to do it. And uh, we have both a billboarding application and a main billboard. Let's run the billboarding application so you can see what we're working with. And what happens is if you have all these random particles that pop up on the screen, and then they organize into a sphere, and you can roll over them, and you can see they, they're moving around. So you actually you energize the particles when you roll over the particles. And then they switch. It's going to change to a compact disk here in a moment. And there's my compact disk. And notice that the energy from that the moving particles were transferred to the new object. So that's very interesting. It's not stopping and restarting the momentum, but the energy is actually stored and transferred to the next particle. And there's my torus. There we go. And we're about to switch to an ellipsoid. Let's roll around here and get some of these particles spinning. And there's my ellipsoid right there. It's a nice uh, two circular orbits that you can see inside the ellipsoid if you uh, rotate it. And so if you keep doing this, it'll basically just cycle back to the uh, sphere and keep going through the different objects. And now let's go ahead and explain how this program was built. So it's all in a main uh, application called uh, Main Billboard, and this is all on the web for you to download. And we'll show you that in a moment. And so you have your typical uh, paper vision decorations. You do an import. I'm using Basic View here, so I basically just extend the Basic View class to my Main Billboard uh, class. And here's my super class for the the uh, Basic View, and from there. I actually initiate 400 particles onto the screen at once, all into the 0, 0, 0 position. And then I use just basically a tweener to throw those particles into random positions. X random, Y random, and Z random. And that all happens at a delay time of 6 seconds. Then I throw all the particles into a container and into an array and throw that onto the stage. So I can tick through that array. And the cool thing here is this basically this tweener add tween function where I delay six seconds and then I go to the, my first form which is a sphere. So here's my first form which is a sphere and that's basically just an equation of a sphere and it throws all the individual particles as it ticks through them into that sphere. So it's going from where they were, the P position, to the new positions X, Y, and Z. And it's doing that all within a delay time of one second. And once that form is done, so you got this tween dot add tween down here. This this is the heart of the program. You'll delay 15 seconds and on complete of that. So the tween function has an on complete method. So at the end of that on complete of 15 seconds, you go to form two, and form two is a that's right is a compact disk. And here's the equation for the compact disk. Ticking once again, ticking through all the same particles, doing the same thing. And at the end of that delay, you go to the on complete form three, which is the torus. And here's the equation for the torus. 
And once again, you just basically uh, add the different uh, particle x, y, and z uh, of the torus geometry. And then at the end of 20 seconds, for example, here you go to uncomplete 4. And that 4 form, of course, is the ellipsoid. Now, in each one of these, you have a my form is equal to, and that's my switch case command. So it's form 1, form 2, form 3, form 4. That's all th uh, thrown down into the switch case. Let's go down and take a look at the switch case real quick. And it's a switch case that uses trilogic, basically, 0, 1, and 2, to transfer the energy of the particles to the next object. So you don't want those, that energy to be thrown out or lost. You want those particles to continue some type of path, but in the geometry of the new object. So here, for example, you go into the frame loop. And in the frame loop, you have the switch case right here. And if you start at the loop, which would be a transition of 0, then it says make the transition 1. And then what you're going to do here is you're going to, in a sense, step through all the particles within a time span of half a second and save all that energy. And then what you do is you transfer all that energy as you tra an oncomplete function, which changes the transition number to 2. And then you transfer all that, all that energy to the new particle. Same thing. Here's the switch case 2. You enter it as a transition of 0. You transition to 1. You grab the energy from the previous particle, and at the end of that grabbing, you throw that onto the next geometrical form. Very simple code, but it does illustrate the use of trilogic. Let's run to the book blog real quick and show you what's on there. So we're on the article of the book blog that this was written about, and we're going to scroll down here. Here's my part. So you can click on that, and uh, you can see basically we're using trilogic. So 0 is no, 1 is maybe, and 2 is yes. And we're using that maybe in a sense to do the energy transfer. Uh, so if you come along here a little bit lower, um, you can actually get this demo from www.professionalpapervision.com forward slash demos forward slash web forward slash billboarding. You can download all the code from Google Code, of course, and uh, the YouTube we're doing now. So that's pretty much the whole system in a nutshell. You know, if you're tired of the boring zeros and ones of Boolean logic, try logic is here, zero, one, two. Thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively from Northern Kentucky University.